finally it rises. Public preference for Lincoln Continental as the symbol for today's luxury motoring. Hey, hey, it's ODB, the Lincoln Addict. We're reviewing on this channel, Barrett Jackson's Scottsdale 2023, the 11 Lincoln Continentals that sold from the 60s, so like 61 through, I think, 66. Um, if you recall, we've went through so far four cars. We're on to Charlie's 64 Lincoln Continental Resto Mod, uh, and then a sneak peek of what is next, uh, this really nice uh, convertible. Uh, which has sold a couple times, but uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump ahead here. Now, this one is going to be a little bit of a surprise to some, including myself, so we've got a lot to talk about with this one. Uh, Charlie is a friend of mine, uh, a really nice guy, and this car basically was stolen at 126500 Again, that does include the buyer's fee, and that is because the source of this is Barrett Jackson, and that's what they list the price at. So obviously that's not the take home. Um, it's a little bit less than that, and there's that buyer fee, which I've talked about. But what I want to do is instead of looking at this blob of information before we jump over to Barrett Jackson's website, we'll jump over and just look at a couple slides that I had put together when uh, Charlie and I were discussing on possibly trying to sell this car before it went to um, auction. So basically, it's a 64. It has a Pontiac GS. I think technically it was an LS2 engine, 4L80 um, 6 speed. I think it technically is a 4L80E. Uh, Detroit Steel Wheel Co's custom sound system. It actually, if you take a look at this photo here, it technically had bucket seats, and it's because with the 4L80E trans, you have a pretty large trans tunnel, and you may not have known this, but just kind of some of the behind the scenes is uh, you basically have uh, the trans tunnel ran here, and what they ended up doing is making this custom center console, and they split all the seats. So it kind of gave it that that bucket seat feel um, based upon the seats kind of being cut down. And any fab shop or high-end kind of interior shop, you know, they've done this kind of work. Um, over the years, and you'll see it from time to time. Um, this slide wasn't fully built out. I think I had resaved this, so you'll see some um, probably errors on here. But um, as far as you know, some of these placeholders. But uh, engine bay was painted. Uh, Charlie actually did what a lot of people don't do. He spent money on this car to get it ready for um, for auction slash to be sold. So he had somebody come in, they did paint correction, any little paint imperfections. They went through that. I mean, he went through a laundry list of things to make sure that this wasn't just a, you know, pun it to the next guy who cares if such and such isn't right. Um, the car wasn't, you know, by any means it, it, you know, and a lot of these cars are not perfect, you know, not every single thing was re-chromed and all that stuff, you know, that's, that's not for everyone, but, um, he did spend money to make this car nice for the next owner. It had mob steel air suspension kit, AccuAir E-level detailed entire undercarriage GPS speedometer, and then custom fully detailed trunk setup. Just a couple of other things. Again, if you look at 64, arguably the most sought after i mean you can obviously split hairs and go 65 is more popular or you know i like 61 through 63 but oftentimes people are looking for a 64 a lot of times folks are looking for black this was a triple black of course the interior kind of retained a factory style uh look and feel uh the trunk interior was um you know completely finished the resto mod highlights obviously the engine and trans that's not for everyone totally get it but charlie had put some miles on this and i may have misspoke before i think he had, it was actually 20 to 30,000 miles he put on this car after doing um the engine swapping right now uh, audison premium sound system fully painted engine bay and again some of the things there i'm not going to cover all these slides but um, for our folks that are in the paint world, um, paint collision, that type of stuff, I guess there's a way for them to scan the paint and it kind of tells them a little bit of insight. Uh, and apparently this was an early 2000s GM paint. Um, some areas of the car, as I mentioned, were resprayed. Uh, the chrome and bright work, which I always say chrome and bright work, which includes the stainless, they were in good condition, original condition. Um, stay fast, new top, powder coated wheels. And um, on the exterior, the takeaways here were 
Other than the bagged suspension and smoothie wheels, the car kind of retains that stock appearance. And that's often what people are looking for. They want like the old school vibe with the resto mod you know, and most people would think resto mod like you know up- upgraded drivetrain you know reliable you'll hear that word a lot a lot of times you'll have like a non-car guy that wants to kind of get in and that's fine they want to get into something that's cool that's hot rod feelish that's uh, a cruiser and they want to be able to feel like hey they're putting the family in there they're safe and they can get from point a to point b they don't want to break down nobody wants to break down and i think the big thing now, because newer cars are so reliable, you know, you just don't, people just don't want to break down. So you'll often hear people go, Hey, you know, I want to have a newer engine. Well, <laughs> like I always say, you don't have to have a new engine not to break down. You know, you got to do the maintenance on the old stuff, but that's for another episode. Um, leave the car as is, you know, is really the way I was spinning this, or you could change it up. You could run some Colorado custom wheels to give it the factory look of the wheel. Um, or again, I would probably just leave it as is. You could see here the engine bay was painted. Um, Also, the engine just wasn't – a lot of times you'll see a a quote LS swap. And guys will go – this is no slight against them. People can do what they want to do. But when you see LS swap, that means a lot of different things. I mean you could spend 20, 30 grand on an LS engine. You can go to a junkyard and get one out of a Tahoe for – $500 $500 probably, right? Uh, you know, you always hear like, I got a buddy that can do it cheaper and that type of thing, right? So there's different variations of quote and LS swap, but this was from a Pontiac G8 um, 07 to 09. I think it was a maybe an Australian car um, or maybe imported from there, but it has LS3 heads and that of course replaced the factory engine, which he did have the factory engine uh, in trans if I recall correctly. 490 foot pounds of torque, Corvette cams, so some work was done, aluminum radiator, fully sprayed engine bay, vintage air air conditioning. Um, car was a non a factory, uh, excuse me, car was a factory non AC car. So you you get air, air condition with this one because with companies like Vintage Air, you can easily install that. The last slide I'll cover here is, again, it was uh, uh, bagged with, I guess, a mob steel kit is the way I understood it. The uh, strong arms, lower control arms for the front. For a long time, that was your only option. AccuAir, so if you start looking at AccuAir or you watch some of my past videos, that stuff can get kind of expensive. So it had the AccuAir system. It had the, of course, uh, smoothie wheels. And um, there were there was routine maintenance, including recently he had someone go through everything, make sure there were no leaks and that type of stuff. And again, you just do not typically get that when someone's looking to quote unquote punt a car or sell a car to someone else. Now, granted, there are guys out there that have collections and they maintain their stuff, they take care of them, but. Oftentimes in these markets, you know, these cars are going to auction and they haven't really been gone through, so to speak. Not every time. Don't get me wrong, but I'm kind of just speaking in general to some of the things that we've seen um, that I've seen personally. Now, if we click this link, which I again, I track all of these these sales. Um, This car, again, was really a surprise, I think, to all of us at one hundred twenty six thousand five hundred. Now, I will say this. I, the preview video that I did leading up to Barrett Jackson Scottsdale 2023, I did mention that there could be Lincoln fatigue, as I'll call it, when we got to that Saturday. So you had two big dogs crossing the block on that Saturday, and this was one of them in my opinion. Um, I think there were a couple, maybe three total, but basically this is one that I, I, you know, we had asked more for this car just to be, you know, totally transparent. Um, and that just what happens sometimes, you know, sure. You know, was Charlie, I'm sure confident. Was I confident that, yeah, it's going to go to, to, to sale. Um, you know, you obviously have transporting there. You have potentially, you know, if you travel there, you have a week or more or less of stay, um, you know, so you have a lot of expenses when these cars go to auction and, and I'll just speak for myself. I was confident that it would pull in more, but with the potential leak and fatigue, right? So I'm covering 11 cars that sold that week. Um, this was a Saturday car, so they kind of called a prime time. He had a good spot. You probably had some guys that spent their money maybe on a car that for whatever reason, was more desirable. And I think when we get to that number one out of those 11, you're going to be blown away 
at what took the most um, in terms of the highest sale and maybe why, right? So I'll break that stuff down. But let's just briefly go through this. You basically have the same photos. Charlie had a professional photographer uh, take photos of the car and he had shared all the photos with me as we were leading up to a potential sale. We had a couple people interested and it just didn't work out. Now, they didn't buy the car when it went to auction. Certainly, they could have gotten you know the car for a better deal than we were asking. And believe me, I would say to you that can always happen, right? Um, you could have somebody offer you know, or to sell a car, and then you know let's say you decide you don't want to buy it, and then it goes to auction, and then you snag it for less, right? Typically, that doesn't happen. It goes the other way. But I would caution everyone that if you're looking to buy one of these cars, don't feel like you have to go to Barrett Jackson or Mecham to get one. I mean, you can often cut deals outside of that. And especially because, again, if somebody goes to auction, it is they're rolling the dice, especially at Barrett Jackson, because for those that don't know, there's no reserve. Okay. It's just let it fly, right? Let it all hang out. So um, there's a little bit of insight to that. I do believe this car should have brought more money based upon the work that's in it. And again, you could look at some of the things, some of the small minor things of it. Th this car wasn't a full-blown show car by any means. I mean, this was like kind of a higher-end driver car, so to speak. And I say that loosely because these cars, you're often not going to see a full-blown show car that's that's lifted up in the air at a show and it's a full detailed engine bay uh all underneath the car low rider style you just don't see that in these cars because they're fun to drive and who wants to display them like that right now there of course was joe at weld county customs that car went for over 700 grand last year that's probably the closest that you're going to get to a full-blown show lincoln that of course can drive but then also be detailed to kind of win at like a world of wheels type show but again just to summarize, a car like this is a driver. It's fun. Spring, summer, it doesn't matter. As long as it's not winter, you can cruise this car and you can have fun. And the person that got it for that price, certainly kudos to them because they're going to have an awesome driver. And, um, you know, it is what it is. And the good thing is I have talked to Charlie briefly since then. You know, he was all high spirits. Boom, he's on to the next project. And that's what you're going to find from these kind of guys that have cool stuff, they're always itching for that next thing. And, of course, I think he's picked up a truck since then. And he's got some other endeavors that he's going to go down. Now, certainly, if this was my car, I wouldn't have sold it. But that's why I'm the Lincoln addict and uh, I'm kind of a hoarder, so to speak. But uh, best of luck to Charlie and the new owner of this car. It's a beautiful one. And uh, certainly, I appreciate the opportunity to try to sell the car. But, again, in closing, someone got a fantastic deal and uh, I hope to see this thing cruising. I don't know what state it's going to, but certainly I hope that uh, someone's going to enjoy it. If you like what we're doing here, check out LincolnAddict.com. You can find ways to listen to Lincoln Addict Podcast. I have shirts and stickers, kind of a few left, if you will. Um, and you can order those if you'd like there on LincolnAddict.com. Uh, check out Lincoln Addict Podcast. Some of the new recent uh, episodes are here on YouTube. Uh, others, you have to go to a podcast app. It's free like Lincoln Addict, uh, or excuse me, like Apple Podcasts or Podbean. Again, you can find links to that on LincolnAddict.com. Appreciate all the support and congratulations to the buyer of this car for 126500 Might seem like a lot, but they got a lot for that money. 1964 Lincoln Continental Convertible. Take care, everyone. See ya.